So welcome to another week, and we are in Chapter 10, Global Inequality. And so this first section will really just be about understanding basic concepts and what's going on on a global level. So the first one is what is global inequality? And so this is the concentrating resources in certain nations and is significantly affecting the opportunities of people in poor and less powerful countries. Global stratification is the unequal distribution among nations. So if we're kind of applying what we just learned about social class within the U.S. and the inequality, now we're going to apply it to a global level. And so some of the common terms we discuss different country have, have have been and I guess I still see is like this idea of like first, second, third world. And so these are outdated Cold War war terms and it's been very pro problematic, right? Because not only are we placing ourselves in first, is that then these all have this hierarchical power and in thus we're saying that uh, some countries are better than others. And so it's super problematic and it's not a way, it's very ethnocentric of us as Westerners. And so let's understand the world a little differently and how we can kind of all play or understand and how we are inter interconnected. And so for us within social, we use world systems. And in world systems, they have their own classifications. And so in social, these are the ones we use. These are the ones you should be discussing in your blogs and your feedback and in anything sociological. This is how we should understand it. And so we have core nations, and these tend to be the dominant capitalistic countries, highly industrial, technological, and urbanized. And so these are countries like the U.S., Canada, um, some Western Europeans. And then we have peripheral nations, nations that have very little industrializations. And these are the most marginalized, and their means of production are owned by the core nation. So um, maybe not owned, but the companies there, theirs that are that dominate the industries aren't theirs. And so the profits really coming to the core nations and the corporations from the core nations. Then we have the semi-peripheral nations, and these are the in-between nations, not powerful enough. Um, to have their own say and to be a core nation, but they are a major source for raw material. And so maybe they're producing a lot of crops, maybe they have a particular product that's very popular. And so they have some say and some importance, at least in this system. Okay, and then we have the World Blank Bank classifications. And so here it'll be very much like the class things that we've talked about. High income nations. They're gonna their growth as a nation is gonna be at least twelve thousand dollars a year. And in this US, Germany, Canada, the UK. Middle income nations, the gross national income is between a thousand to twelve thousand. Thailand, China, Nambia. Then we have low income nations, gross national income less than a thousand. So these are going to be many Asian and African countries. And so here is a visual, not of their income, but of the wealth. And so wealth per adult. And so we can see, similar to what we just saw, is understanding that there are some of uh, these high income nations, the Western countries that are the core nations, let me see. And then we have other ones more in the middle. And then, of course, we have the ones that are on the lower end, the low income and the peripheral nations in many parts of Africa and many parts of Asia. OK, problems for high income nations. So the two important, really important concepts to know here is capital flight. And so this is when capital moves from one country to another. For example, General Motors closing their factories in the U.S. and going to Mexico. This is, we also call this globalization and outsourcing. So it may be also known in a few other ways. Uh, Deindustrialization. So this happens when 
capital flight occurs because no new companies open to replace these jobs lost to foreign nation. And so if we think about what happened to Detroit and how Detroit completely fell apart as a result of this, right, is that once uh, these companies get outsourced because they're trying to turn a bigger profit or they're trying to cut cost or maybe ignore regulations or don't want to have to abide by the regulations, that they're going to go, right? And so what is left behind and what is this causing problems? And so I have an example to kind of show you is about uh, mac maqui Maquiladoras, which this documentary is called Maquilopolis. And it's really talking about the maquilas, the factories that are in um, Mexico and what what does this look like? And why is this a problem? So watch the clip, and it's also a full documentary you can watch with subtitles. So it's important to understand that there's social problems and social issues that arise on both ends of this capital flight outsourcing globalization is for us in the U.S. is that we lose these jobs. And who does these impact? Working class, poor class poor classes that are losing their jobs. And for them, then they turn around and they're blaming, they use, they tend to use immigrants as a scapegoat saying those people over there are taking your jobs. When in actuality is that these companies are leaving, right? It's, it has nothing to do with the immigrants that have been coming to the U.S. It has to do with these companies leaving because they're trying to turn a profit, a bigger profit. It's not that they weren't, they weren't making profits, it's that they want a bigger profit, so that becomes a key issue. And then on their end, they're going to be uh, sacrificing their bodies uh, in very horrific conditions, uh, lack of health care, lack of uh, sufficient, like just a whole bunch of other issues are happening on their end as well in these other nations. Then we have middle income nation problems. The biggest thing to know here is debt accumulation. The buildup of external debt wherein countries borrow money from other nations to fund their expansion or growth goals. And so um, Latin America is um, in a lot of debt to the U.S. because of something we call the neoliberal policies. And so uh, I have a clip about this that kind of describes what happens when we make a trade with something like um, middle income countries with high income nations and some problems that arise. And so we'll take a moment to watch this and then we'll keep going. And so through a neoliberal policies, free trade agreements and other things along that line is that countries, uh, other countries have to essentially kind of sell their soul. They have to agree to kind of remove government help, remove a public access to things, privatize uh, their sources, let uh, foreign nations into their country in exchange for some a loan, in exchange for having access to build uh, factories and other things like that. And the problem is that it tends to destabilize their economies. It tends to destabilize their politics and their government. It creates a lot more problem because now you're having revolts and pushback and protesting against these policies. And then, again, just creating more issues, more violence. And then people from other nations are trying to move up. And they're trying to move to Mexico, to U.S., to other Western nations that aren't having these problems. Us not knowing is that our government, we have created that dis destabilization in most of these countries through our international and neoliberal policies. And so there's not a very uh, big understanding of how this happens for the average person. And so it tends to be a lot bigger than what we think. The last one, which is low-income nation problems. And so... This, what's important to note here, is absolute poverty. 88 million people live on a dollar twenty-five a day. Three billion people live on less than two fifty a day. And so, again, going back to this absolute poverty, absolute deprivation, uh, this is the biggest thing: starvation.
lack of shelter, lack of clothing, lack of education, lack of medical care, that is just not happening in some of these low-income nations. And who is disproportionately impacted by these things? Women. Women are disproportionately in poverty all around the world. Even in the U.S., we still see this pattern. And so it creates a huge issue. Okay, so why? So why isn't the whole world industrializing and catching up with the Welsh nations? The biggest thing is colonization, right? And to, initially we think of like conquering and, you know, Christopher Columbus colonizing here, but it's also still happening in that we are still exploiting land in other countries and resources. And, but the actual country and the people there aren't able to see profit or benefit from any of this. And so it's really, um, and we'll talk a little bit more as we discuss theory, but the biggest thing is that core nations are profiting and exploiting the semi-periphery and peripheral nations. And that's the biggest reason we'll see. Okay, that wraps up. This lecture is a little longer um, with a lot of good information. Okay. Bye.